In this video I'm going to look at the greenhouse effect. Now, this is a very complex topic um, but the theories I'm going to use, the explanations I'm going to use are absolutely fine for AS chemistry. So the first thing to mention is something that comes as a surprise to some students. We actually need the greenhouse effect. Without the greenhouse effect, the scientists believe that the global temperature, the average global temperature, would be around about minus 20 degrees Celsius. So obviously that's too cold to support life. So the greenhouse effect has built up over millions of years and has given us our average um, global temperature of around about 18 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to use this very basic diagram to help explain what causes the greenhouse effect. So hopefully you can see top left hand corner there I've got the sun and obviously I've got the earth down below there and in green I'm labelling the upper part of the atmosphere um, the stratosphere. We're going to focus on what goes on in the stratosphere in a moment. So the first thing to be aware of is the sun provides us with UV radiation. So I'm going to represent that with a purple wave. So this is UV from the sun. So it enters our atmosphere and it reaches Earth. Now what happens is the, the Earth absorbs the UV and then re-emits it, but it doesn't re-emit it as UV, it re-emits it as infrared. So I've changed the colour pen to red. So this is a longer wavelength, and I've deliberately stopped at the stratosphere. So, what happens to this infrared? Well, some of it gets through, but some of it is actually sent back to Earth. So what we've got to try and work out is what causes this process here. So I've changed whiteboards now and I'm expanding the stratosphere. So I've stopped the infrared ray just before it enters the stratosphere and we're going to populate this with some gases and obviously these are the greenhouse gases that we're going to be talking about now so the one everybody knows is carbon dioxide we've also got water vapor in there we've also got methane in there and others So when the infrared reaches this part of the stratosphere where these greenhouse gases are, they will actually absorb the infrared. Now what that does is it raises the energy of the gases and it makes the bonds vibrate. Eventually, the molecules will relax back down into a lower energy state and the energy is re-emitted. Now the important thing to stress here is that when the molecules relax and re-emit this energy, it's re-emitted in all directions. So some of this energy will pass out through the atmosphere, so some of the energy that's re-emitted goes out of the atmosphere, but some of it, quite a lot of it even, is re-emitted back down to Earth. And it's these infrared rays that actually warm up the atmosphere. So if I go back to my original board, we'll just go through that again now, now that we know what's going to happen here. So we have the sun providing us with UV, 
the Earth absorbs that and then re-emits it as infrared. The infrared reaches the stratosphere where the greenhouse gases are. The greenhouse gases absorb the infrared radiation. That makes the bonds vibrate, it raises their energy, and then eventually these molecules will relax and re-release that energy, re-emit that energy. But the crucial thing now is that it is in all directions. So some of the infrared will pass through the atmosphere, but a lot of it is sent back to Earth. And it's these rays that warm up the lower atmosphere. Now it's worth pointing out at this stage that this process has actually been happening for from the beginning of time and if you think about the very early earth we had a lot of volcanic activity and that will have put a large amount of CO2 into the atmosphere. We then have the um, beginning of life so living things respire and they put CO2 in the atmosphere. Living things die and when organic matter decomposes it releases CO2. So CO2 levels have increased since the beginning of time. Methane has gone into the atmosphere due to the formation of fossil fuels um, and also due to the decomposition of organic matter when living things die. That's put, me that's put methane in the atmosphere. And obviously water vapour gets into the atmosphere from the evaporation of oceans. So up until a few hundred years ago, we've had a nice steady um, level, levels of these gases in the atmosphere. And so we've established this ideal temperature, if you like, um, for the Earth. Unfortunately, um, industrial activity and various other things have increased the levels of these gases um, and it's adding to the greenhouse effect. So effectively, if these gases are increasing in concentration, that means more of this absorption and re-emission is taking place, and so more of this infrared is being sent back down to Earth, and so the atmosphere is getting warmer as a result. We're going to look at something called the global warming potential now, which is sometimes referred to as greenhouse factor. Basically, we're going to we're going to have a look at um, how much a particular gas can contribute to the greenhouse effect. So this is going to depend on two things. So obviously, the first factor is going to be um, how much of the gas is in the atmosphere. So if there's a high concentration of this particular gas in the atmosphere then it's obviously going to have more of a greenhouse factor than something with a low concentration. So that's the first factor. Now the second factor, you can see in brown there, the gas has to be able to absorb and obviously then re-emit infrared. So both of these factors play a part in determining the global warming potential of the gas or its greenhouse factor. So if we look at a couple of examples now, so if we take the air, the air is 78% nitrogen. So it's got a very, very high concentration in the atmosphere. But its global warming potential is zero. So what that means is nitrogen doesn't cause the greenhouse effect. So what that's telling us is it obviously can't, or it doesn't, absorb infrared. Now if we look at CO2 now, so that's 0.03% roughly. Now that's a very low concentration. Its global warming potential, GWP, Carbon dioxide is classed as one. So that's effectively the, the standard that scientists use. 
And if we go to something like nitrogen oxides, so I won't specify which one, I'll just refer to them in their generalized formula of NOx. Now, they've got a tiny, tiny concentration percentage in the atmosphere. So it's about three times 10 to the minus 5%. So very, very small, very, very small. However, their global warming potential is measured at 160. So what that's telling us is that nitrogen oxides are 160 times um, worse, I suppose, for the atmosphere than CO2. So they can contribute um, 160 times more to the greenhouse effect than CO2. So luckily their concentration in the atmosphere is very low but if this increases obviously you can see that that's going to have a dramatic effect on um, the greenhouse effect.